All right. Greetings. Let's begin. All right. First of all, my Twitter handle, Lupane, as shown. And I'm making this recording because some of the traders in my private Discord have asked me to do so. And also, I received a few private messages about it. So uh, the particular thing I'm going to show here is, is noteworthy. So I'm going to go over it. Now, just to make it clear, I run a private Discord room. It's for advanced traders that are already skilled at analyzing footprint charts and order flow. Unless you can demonstrate proficiency, you are not welcome, period. I need to put it bl as bluntly as possible because invariably we have people who just do not understand kindness or politeness, and they will try to, in essence, bully themselves into the room. So. And the nice thing is I just end up blocking them. Anyway, um, and the reason I do that is because I've, I've noticed that so many Discord rooms are just filled with noise and nonsense and opinion. And it's very, very, very difficult to actually follow anything that makes sense trading wise. So I, I run a pretty tight ship. Um, and, you know, the people that are there are there to share share their knowledge and learn. And that's what happens without distractions. I mean, yes, we have a section you can post your distractions in, but uh, you're not gonna distract, you know, my traders during trading hours while we're actively trading. Anyway, um, I live stream my charts daily on Discord. And that means complete with audio alerts. My charts have automatic audio alerts that kick on. And they'll say things like long sentiment, delta top, buyer exhaustion, and a whole series of other warnings and notices. And that enables the uh, people in my room to not have to watch the chart continually until an event is actually transpiring. Okay, and then I will step in from time to time and offer voice commentary on interpreting chart patterns and, and things like that, or whenever we're having a particularly interesting day I will, I will show what's about to happen. Um, for those of you who haven't figured it out yet, I collaborate with Professor on Twitter, and there's his handle, Denis Kiziltas, regularly. Uh, we've been collaborating for about a year now or so, probably a little over a year at this point. And by collaborating, I mean we hold, you know, two-hour Zoom conferences. Uh, we share analytical data, we share our observations, and um, and then you know we we code we code things to see if those observations uh, become anything. Uh, if you're watching some of his charts, you'll notice that my charts often identify similar levels, but our al our algorithms are different because. You know, we, we each look at basically the same things, but we employ different methodologies to try and determine what we feel is important. And so, you know, rather than having a group think mindset, it's important that uh, we reach independent conclusions on how things should be handled because uh, that, that only strengthens the, uh, the total job we're doing. Anyway, what, what I am gonna show you today is a chart replay, which means it's a sim. It's already happened, and it's of 2022-1103 at around the, uh, let's say, the 1411 time frame, and that's UTC minus 0500. For those of you who just, just can't understand this, right there, okay, this is, figure it out yourself. This is in standard ISO 8601 format. It's an international standard for representing dates, and it was adopted by the U.S. in NIST FIPS Publication 4-2. So, you know, don't ask me what this means. It's all over the Internet. It's a common standard. If you can't figure out a date and time, 
please walk away from trading now. I'm also going to take a moment to answer some common questions because I, I get a barrage of questions on Twitter, just a barrage of questions continually, same old thing, okay? What do I use? What's my software? All this kind of stuff. I use Sierra Chart, Denali Data Feed, um, Service Package 11. I use Tatone CME Order Routing uh, to avoid delays in sending the order to the brokerage first, okay? And just to make it clear, I can't answer your question on other platforms, nor do I even want to answer your question on Sierra Chart. I am not Sierra Chart technical support. Sierra Chart has their own tech support. You are welcome to speak with them as much as you want. For some reason, people seem to feel that I should be their tech support. I'm not sure why. And in fact, they'll ask me questions that are already covered by the Sierra Chart documentation because they simply don't want to look it up. I'm not interested in that. Anyway, I write my own custom studies for Sierra in C++ uh, along with the standard integration using the CBBOAC. And if you don't know what that is, uh, it's not going to make any difference to you at this point. Uh, I primarily trade footprint and resting liquidity on the LOB. Well, duh, what's the LOB? It's the limit order book. Where footprint analysis of the order flow leads to a trade possibility. And then resting liquidity serves as the gatekeeper. What does that mean? It simply means that... I use correlated factors in my trading, okay? Primarily, you know, the, the footprint analysis um, and the footprint analysis also shows me the order flow uh, once, it's, uh, once it's spent. And that leads to a trade signal or not. And at that point, I check resting liquidity um, to see if resting liquidity vetoes that trade. So basically, resting liquidity is the gatekeeper. Okay, now let's clarify some terms because people get very hung up on terms and it seems like dictionary words are no longer dictionary words. People make up their own definitions for things now. Order flow. I mean, orders that have been consumed and remain static. They cannot be pulled. They've been consumed. That should be fairly clear, you know, at this point. So let's move on. By resting liquidity, I mean the unconsumed liquidity on the limit order book that is dynamic, which means that it's subject to pulling and stacking asynchronously of price action. That's an important factor. Uh, resting liquidity is asynchronous of price action. You know, it doesn't change every time uh, price ticks up or down. It changes asynchronously of price. It changes even if price remains stagnant. So important factor there to consider. For those who, who ask continuously, I don't use lagging indicators. I don't use traditional crossover studies or astrological forecasts, palmistry, uh, voodoo, tea leaves, or anything like that in my trading. I use the items I already denoted above, so refer to the above. I don't always post on Twitter, especially on days when there's a lot of market activity. I'm busy live streaming, and I'm also busy posting some of the updates to the charts on other private uh, Discord channels that, I, that I'm a guest in. So Twitter is usually one of my last resources, uh, unless I have a, a moment or, you know, um, it's gotten slow in between trades. And as far as my Discord room, I don't want people 
In fact, I, I'm going to block you. If you just send me a message that says, hey, can I join your Discord? You will be blocked, period, automatically. Um, if you want to demonstrate, if you can demonstrate proficiency as an advanced trader with a track record or something that shows you know what you're doing, well, I have a group of similar traders that you can join for free. Contact me via Twitter. But again, you know, you need to demonstrate proficiency in your trading. Uh, so th this is not for beginning traders. This is not from for people who've never seen a footprint chart. And, and I don't care if you're not a footprint trader, as long as you can demonstrate consistency and proficiency in your trading. You know, uh, what awaits you is a private community free of charge that uh, doesn't have a bunch of noise in it and has other traders like yourself, you know, all collaborating and sharing information. So there's no better confluence than a group of independent traders who already know what they're doing. All right. With this crazy introduction done, I'll move on to item number two. Item number two, uh, some of you feel entitled and think that I should share my knowledge, my chart books, and my studies with you. You know, this, the custom studies that I've coded in C++. Um, so I sometimes get messages like this from people. This looks extremely interesting, big, big fan of footprint, blah, 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 et cetera. Um, was wondering if you shared this chart book or could, or could give me any more info on the specifications for this study, thanks. So basically, no to both questions. Okay, and then, then the accusations start flying. And simple question to you is, when did you first begin to erroneously believe I'm under some sort of obligation to help others or to live my life the way others think I should live my life? If you really believe that, go convince the vendors who sell advanced Sierra chart studies to give you their stuff for free and to explain how they coded it, idiot. Anyway, that's the typical nonsense and garbage I get from people. I've spent more than, uh, I spent thousands of hours in front of the charts over years, and I've spent at least hundreds of hours finally coming up with a methodology and coding, coding, custom coding in C++, the studies for that methodology. You have other vendors all over the internet who are selling their products you know, usually at a subscription rate, at a one-time fee, $1,500, et cetera, uh, $300 a month for this study, things like that. You've got lots of Sierra chart vendors who are selling their knowledge. And, and it's pretty simple stuff too, that's the thing. And here you expect me to give you things for free just because you ask. In addition, you can see that the sense of entitlement from some people because they can't take a simple no as an answer and instead they feel the need to escalate. Anyway, because of that, I now run a very tight ship on my Discord server. And once again, if you're not qualified or if you're from the entitled masses, you're not getting through, period. Okay. Now I can proceed. Uh, I'm going to show you, as I already said and showed, the, uh, the Thursday, the 3rd of November. And I'm going to start replaying this chart. And this is stuff that people saw live in my Discord channel that I commented on. So there's a couple of, oh, there is one more thing I need to show you, in fact. Uh, and that is, you will find me referring to this. Marskoy Kanyok. Okay, that is Russian for seahorse. Marskoy Kanyok. Okay, Russian for seahorse. I am not Russian. This is, you know, look, it's deeple. Anyone can translate something from one language to another. But anyway, it's just named in honor of, uh, of someone. So someone that I went on vacation with. So uh, 
there we are. With that, we will commence. And again, you know, the traders in my room saw this happening live when it was happening. All right, here we go. Let's take a look here. This is the footprint chart. It's a 3.5 range footprint chart. Just pay attention to the footprint. Here it looks like we're starting to have an upside down Marskoy Kanyok bar. If we have an upside down Marskoy Kanyok bar, it could signal that we should go long. So we will have to very carefully see how this plays out. Okay, that Marskoy Kanyok bar, we're still going further down. So we're still printing red. So we're going to keep an eye on this. And here it looks like we may have a push up. We'll wait to see what happens if we if we get to cross above this point of control again on the bar. I'll put a horizontal ray here just to see where that point of control is. You see where we cross from red to the uh, from sellers to buyers pushing it on the delta side of average the, exceeded. Of the bar. Average exceeded. That means we're getting more volume into the bar now. Let's see what the push is. We seem to have exhaustion at the bottom. And good split between buyers and sellers still. This looks like a Marskoy Kanyok upside down. So again, we're looking for some upside action and I'm gonna take that. Let's see if I can get a better entry price. I'm taking that with a order macro filled. Key. Order filled. Okay. Order filled. Target reached. Okay, my T1 has been reached. My stop is now at break even for the runner, and now I need to set a place for the runner to go. And there's a prior trade zone here at about uh, 44. So I'm going to keep an eye out here at 44. Come stopped on. out. Oh, we stopped out. Okay, so we got uh, our two point runner so far. We're going to keep our eye out here on what's happening. We still may have the reversal. This is a retest of this bottom here. Again, average exceeded. We have sellers at the bottom here, average exceeded. We've got more volume flowing into this. You could see the absorption that happened on the prior one. We've got a little more absorption happening. Let's see if it exhausts. This is a very thin bar so far. It's just started, of course. We have sellers at the bottom once again. Notice how it remains thin. Now we're getting a little bit of volume here. And we continue down. Okay. So let's watch that. Let's set our line here to the point of control of, of this absorption area to know what's happening and we seem it seems like we're going to go above so again can i get a fill didn't get a fill order filled got it okay order filled thank you where are we going waiting Two point T one. I, I make a hundred dollars immediately per contract. Meanwhile, while that's cooking, let's see where prior trade zones are here. Let's extend some zones out. We have this prior trade zone here, roughly thirty seven forty four. Okay. And we also have uh, a prior support zone that got broken at 37.49, roughly. Keep that in mind too. And come on. Target reached. Okay. Okay. Now, where do we go with T2? How about 37.44? We're going to have to keep an eye out here. I have my finger on. Well, I'll just drag this for you if need be. Let's see. We. If we start going red here, I'm going to just close this out. I'm going to take 44. Target reached. Okay. Now we wait and look for our next trade. Where do we stand on all this meanwhile? 20 points. Okay. All right. Here, 
Here, this is almost, almost a right side up, Marzco y Cañoc bar, um, but except for the inside, the, the uh, bar body is green. If this was red, I would be looking at a downturn, but it's, it's a green bar. So we have another green bar, that's fine, let them play out. I'm looking for the start of a red bar first. There are other things you look for, by the way. There are other, other patterns that are indicative of certain order flow. Okay, here we have a red bar. Let's see how this is gonna play out. We have buyers at the top in a big snout. Okay, now I need to see a spine. The Marskoy Canyok must have a spine, the seahorse. This is a right side Average up exceeded. seahorse. Okay, we continue to push up. That's still green now. Once again, same analysis. What's this going to look like? This is too thin to be of interest to me still. You can look in the order flow in the resting liquidity here. Okay, resting liquidity. What's going on? We have these nodes at the top here. Where are we trying to go? Uh, there's nothing above. And there's a horrible 3705 below. But nearby Average spot liquidity. Okay, sorry, I got to go here again. We've got downward liquidity. We have this forming on a Marskoy Kanyok bar almost. This may be worth taking. It has a strange formation at the top. It's not really buyer exhaustion yet. I'm not fully convinced. We do have good absorption, so I need to keep a close eye now. And it's got to be a cell. Okay, so let's take a look. We continue upward. Okay, here you can immediately. Uh, I got to take that trade now. Too late. Got screwed up here. Let's see if we can still catch it. I will not chase the trade. This is also playing back at five times speed. So it's very easy to miss, unfortunately, miss the entry I wanted to take. Order filled. Got filled anyway. Order filled. And Target reached. T1 reached. T1 has been reached. T2 is set to stop at break even automatically Probe thanks failed. to the OCO group. Now, let's go look at a bottom target. Here, here we have this prior trade zone. So I am going to target just above that prior trade zone. You can see here we have a 37.44, also a prior trade zone that I extended out. So we have to see what how price action behaves here. And we from there we can decide if we let T2 run or if we try to close it out and get, get some more points. Generally, T2 is left unattended other than managing the uh, average exceeded the exit for it. So we'll see where this runs. Meanwhile, where is it likely to run? Unfortunately, we have upside liquidity here. It's stacked, uh, it's getting pulled. So it's a 50-50 chance. Now now they're stacking at the bottom, big stack at the bottom. Now it's, you know, moved to the top, et cetera. So it's all over the place. This is what I call a pickle zone at this point. This is a pickle zone, meaning that uh, you could get pickled if you trade in here, unless you are really cautious. So let's look at uh, other possible trade zones on this setup here. Here we see a prior support zone. Maybe it's a resistance zone now, so I'll draw that out. And uh, toward the bottom, ah, toward the bottom, I also see this 3725 was a prior trade zone, and right above it, at 3726.50 or so. Here, while well, that's playing itself out, this is a this is a minor swing zone. This is a minor swing zone, okay? And below it is a prior trade zone that my system automatically generated. So this is a known area where there was a change in uh, the flow. Anyway, looks like we're gonna get uh, stopped out here. I wasn't paying attention. 
But anyway, that's okay. We're, we'll be stopped out at break even, and that's why it's called a runner because it either runs or it fails. I could have stopped it out earlier, but I'm trying to show you stuff. Meanwhile, here, let's see. Liquidity is sort of, well, it isn't gone, but my threshold for liquidity shows that the uh, major nodes are gone. So we're sort of in a, a free for all here, which means that the market makers can easily move, uh, basically bully price around. So we'll keep watching here. We do have a node at 37.40, but we also have one at 37.60, although price is much closer to 37.40 Delta node. top. And the 37.40 node Delta hasn't been top. touched in a while. Now, I just heard Delta top, and it looks like we're about to get stopped out. Remember, I get stopped out of break even here. Average on the runner, exceeded. So I lose stopped out. no money. And commissions are minor. So here we go. We got stopped out. Now we're observing the top to see what happens and see what we should do. Still, they're pushing, pushing down from the top. This is still a worthwhile area to try to get back into. I'll see if they pull this back up here. Maybe I'll even. Delta top. Delta ah. top. Okay, so we had a delta top. Let's see. Ah, it's coming back. So let me see if I can catch somewhat the top of that. I'll go a tick off. You can see where my stop is. My stop is 2.5 points always. I don't move the stop around. My initial order stop. filled. So just got the order filled. Order filled. Long sentiment. Uh oh, long sentiment. Ah, but now we have liquidity stacking below, influencing price. These guys are further away from price. So we have a stack below happening. We still have the same. Notice the split. Here we had a bunch of buyers on top, sellers underneath that bar. Here we have buyers on top and a mixed bag below. So what's going to happen? Let's see what happens here. Sellers, Delta. Delta goes towards sellers so far. Delta goes towards sellers. Yes, there we go. So we have the same thing. You know, the split between buyers and sellers. Very crisp, concise split. And again, we have absorption going on. We have, now we have a Marskoy Kanyok forming, which means that either here or the next few bars Target we should reached. exhaust and go downward. And sure enough, look. We're going downward. T1 has been hit. So again, any points after this are completely free. No, no possibility of a loss. And now it's a matter of where do we target? Where do we target the next uh, area? Well, let's see. We know we're going to make 44 likely. So maybe I'll make a if we're going to make 44 or we're likely to make 44 before whoops before we turn around i'll target 45. i i don't like that that was an attempt at a pull-up uh, that's a failed pull-up though the liquidity is trying to pull us back up so i may just close this out Come on, just close. Target reached. Okay, target reached. How are we doing point-wise? 37 and a half. Yes, points. Here, yeah, yeah, okay, we're coming back up. You can see that liquidity was pulling us upward. Now it's sort of disappeared. Now we're stacking on top. It's Liquidity is rapidly shifting, okay? But the one thing you'll notice is we have super strong liquidity at 37.05. We have this big puddle of liquidity here, 37.05. And on the top side, things are not as strong. In fact, 38.20, and that's that's way too far away right now compared Probe to failed. this closer downward target. So we're going to follow along here. Now, another thing that's happening, I gotta, I need to pause this to show you or something, but um, I'm going to draw a rectangle in here. We have 
we have a buy and sell area in here that is now acting as a pickle zone. So what, what I want to do is I want to avoid, avoid this area. And if we break out below this area, possibly go short again. So looking, looking here, uh, this is a down bar and we have a, a green snout, nice, nicely formed, not enough volume. This is a Marskoy Kanyok bar indicating a downward action, but it doesn't have enough volume happening yet to it. Let's see how this bar is forming. So far, this bar looks like an upside, it's green right now, upside down, possible upside down Marskoy Kanyok. So we have mixed signals here with the order flow. We're going to let it continue. You can see what we have here, upward liquidity, really pushing. Now we have stacking downward, so it's a mixed bag. This is the contention zone, the pickle zone, right? So I'll continue to let this zone play out. We have what appears to be, except we're red. Our, our bar body is red, so that doesn't count. If our body, if our bar body were green, this would be an upside down Marskoy Kanyok, but it's, it's not, it's red bar body. Now it's green bar body. Now we qualify as possibly a push above, but, oh, come on. I can't believe that. <laughs> okay. Um, a push above. There we go. I'm going to extend the zone out. Anyway, you understand there's a zone here now. I'm going to just extend this. This uh, Since we have a top uh, extension already, I'm just going to extend this bottom part. And we'll keep watching that. All right, we have we have an official reverse Marskoy Kanyok here, which means that we would want to push up higher if we exhausted. And we did have absorption here, so it is possible that we exhausted. However, we are in the pickle zone. I am not going to trade the pickle zone. Or as Brian Average exceeded. Watt would say, don't diddle in the middle. All right, so here we come back up, as you can see. And you can see here also this, this chart uh, told me that 3751 is a uh, is an interesting upper bound 3751 is an interesting upper bound so i'm going to move this delta to top 51 okay delta here we're top getting... delta top delta top uh we're taking that order filled order filled delta top delta top reason we're taking that is because it's right delta off top this prior top delta and, top and we we've exhausted so let's see delta what happens top. With price so far i'm negative negative seven negative three delta top we have absorption again let's see if we can exhaust buyers here I'm anxious on this one to get my two points. Stopped out. Stopped out. Okay, Stopped we took, out. We took our official first loss. Now we're at the top of this, so we continue. Continue wanting to get in at the top of that. Come on. Order filled. Okay. Order filled. We're, we're in the game again. We should be having a nice split between buyers on top and sellers at the bottom if we still have the push down that we had earlier. Uh, liquidity is showing us that we have a fairly... Target well, reached. Nope, liquidity is stacking at the bottom closer to price. So it's forming a nice stack. We already hit our T1. We're going to move our T2 now to... Whoa, this is going too fast for me. Okay, to a prior trade zone, minus a point for now until I look and analyze things here. 
Ah, uh, so what do we have on here? Ah, okay. On, on average this, exceeded. On this runner, let's see. So we'll keep it here. Now, time to observe liquidity and price action. Liquidity continues to stack more at bottom than at top. You can see, well, it's shifting, okay? So you just need to keep an eye out. We'll average keep an eye exceeded. Out meanwhile, down here. Average exceeded. We're getting volume flow in here. We have absorption going on again in the bar. You can see that our stop is at break even now, so there's no way to actually lose points on the trade. If anything, we've already made our $100 per contract on that trade. So we're watching for how price action behaves as we head down to this zone. Is there anything here? Here we have a really strong number at 49. It's a temporary number, though. It's not at a multiple of five. And Average exceeded. They're not able to hold it up. And we keep having a, a ladder of, I'm moving this. I'm moving this to the, here we go, the next target zone. You can see how we have a, a ladder of liquidity literally forming down here and price keeps moving down into it. You see those? And the reason it's moving so quickly is we're, we are at five times. Average exceeded. Okay. But you can see, now we're stacking back up again at this prior trade zone, I have to watch. I'm watching what happens at this line and I have my finger on the flatten button for the trade. Okay, at the same time, um, I'm gonna move my trailing stop, my, my stop, excuse me, to uh, this prior- Average exceeded. Right above that, right below that prior trade zone. Okay, you can see we're red, red, red. We're breaking through this zone, so, I'm going to target these two things I showed you earlier down here, prior prior trade zone and uh, a minor Delta swing bottom. zone. So what is that minor swing Delta zone? That minor bottom. swing zone is uh, here. Long sentiment. 37, 26, 50. So 25, 26, 27, 28, 50 will be my exit. Two points to avoid any front running down here while watching Average liquidity. truncated. Here at this point, I will continue to manage the trailing stop manually to continue to secure at least a Average portion exceeded. of that locked, uh, locked in profits. And here we go. We're heading toward the bottom. Okay. Here you can see, here's, sorry, I wasn't, I, this was too fast to show here. We went, uh, you know, all of a sudden we had a green bar, right? We didn't, we, at the point of control of the prior bar, we sort of petered out and then immediately started printing red. Okay. So here we have a, an area of contention right at this prior trade zone. All right. So this was not going to go anywhere. Ah, this is automatically trailing. My trailing stop has a 12 point trail in case I forget to manage it. It'll manage itself and prevent me from being a total fool. Like if someone comes to my front door or calls me on the Target phone reached. and I'm distracted. I don't at least lose all my points. So my runner just got stopped out down here. So now we're going to watch down here to see what happens. And we're going to watch liquidity. Look at this. 1200 at 3725. You can see it there. There's a flurry of orders. And this is an aggregate here. Of the surrounding area so what's going to happen at that 3725 because we already have resistance going there and boom look at that it just they just pulled and stacked at 3726 delta so guess bottom what? i am going long delta bottom they just pulled and stacked because it's going to be a bounce off of there order filled order filled Stopped out. And I just got stopped out. Stopped so out. I am still taking that long. Probe failed. Probe failed. Order filled. Order filled. We have these two prior prior zone. We were unable to penetrate, and we have long sentiment here. We have a exhaustion of sellers at the bottom. Another exhaustion of sellers at the bottom. This has got to run somewhere. 
So I'm going to take two points. So 37.29 is, is the first one. And 37.31 will be my next one. Two points and four points. Because we are at the close. So you can see the stack of sellers. And you can see that my entry happens to be right in the split between sellers and buyers. And so this should be the exhaustion at the bottom. And my, my 2.5 point stop happens to be, you know, several points below that prior trade zone. So I need to see us get two points here. As far as what liquidity is showing now, we have we had large traders that helped pull this down. Also here, you can see here's the large traders on the on the bid and ask side. So we had large traders that pulled this down. And since those large traders are gone, I expect this to come back up and normalize at least to the within two to four points. And so because we are at the close, the cash close only, okay, the cash close, um, I'm not going to try to hit an upward target at this point. We're not going to have the volume and momentum necessary to do that. So this is where this is where the show ends. So let's see. Hurry up. Liquidity is now, look at this tiered ladder of liquidity Target to reached. the downside. But there we go. We have very close liquidity on the upside here. We've got this 3725 still trying to break this trade zone, you know, but they've been unable to do so. So these are all trapped now. And so now we continue up with trapped traders. Target reached. All right. Now that we hit that, and now we're going to continue. I'm, rather than letting the chart play out, I'm going to pause the chart and explain a few things I was unable to because at five times playback, this is too fast. And at a slower playback, it's too long a video. So note note up here. Okay, let's start, start up here. Are you through moving around? My God. All right. Oh, come on, print. Okay, note up here. Okay, this is the, the first area that I went uh, short. And this should be obvious, okay? What, what do you see up here? Okay, you see nothing but positive delta. You see, let's just call it buyer delta, okay, as opposed to seller delta. You see buyer delta up here. And the buyer delta is well delimited by, you know, a, law, a, a bunch of seller delta here, okay? This is a red bar body. Red bar body. The Buyer delta is on the wick. This is, you know, this, the bar body stops here. Red bar body stops here. This is the upper wick. All the buyer delta is on the wick. This was a probe and it was a failed probe. And when that probe failed, price went downward. Now this is also a Marskoy Kanyok. Okay. This is a, a normal Marskoy Kanyok. You've got, you know, the, the big uh, the big snout and somewhat defined face. There's not enough volume in here, but that's because that volume was taken up here in an absorption. So if you were to combine these two bars together, you would have, you know, this, this spine and you would in fact have this strong tick downward. But so here you have this, this body and as you can see, we went down. The other thing, of course, that happened is here we had um, very positive low cot numbers as we're pushing up, you know, 500, 400, 750, 550. And all of a sudden we go to negative 310 and we had zero high cot, right? Because these are range bars. And then we go to negative 310 and 
everything just comes crashing down. So that's that's another thing. Um, here, you can see this is a green bar body, okay? And I, so it's the opposite of this, basically. So if you were to flip this guy over, he would look something like this. You would have, again, this snout, this, here, here are our cellars. Let me try to get this for you. All right, here are, here's cellar delta at the bottom. Okay, and then, you know, basically above that, certainly all of this portion is buyer delta. And it's a green bar, it's a green bar. So you got buyer delta there, but you also have, notice where the wick is. Okay, the body of this bar ends here. This is the wick. And you have all that seller delta on a probe, on a liquidity probe that then failed, you know, and it's tapered seller delta too, completely tapered. The lower you go, the less interest there is and the buyers take over. And you can see how they continue to go up here you have some weird activity here, okay? Because and, and this is a green bar, so you know this looks like an upside down Marskoi Kanyok again. Um, and the next thing that happens is that you have a delta top, and I'm not going to go into that right now. But you know, immediately once this finishes printing, the next print, next print becomes a downtick. So you know you're not going to long this with an immediate downtick you know or if you are you're going to wait for the for the downtick to start going up again and try to get a really good entry but here here you have this downtick that basically followed to the bottom of this bar but there's no volume here look there's hardly any volume inside that bar compared to here so whatever this is we've exhausted it um you know and these could have been stops that were being hit i, I don't know i'm not going to look right now but uh you know, the next thing that happens here, this is this is a nothing bar to me, except uh, the system did call this as long sentiment, I think. And, you know, the long sentiment, the only problem with, with this is, look, you know there's a prior trade zone here, okay? So are you going to go long? And you know there's a, you know that there was a delta top here, this purple that you, it's harder to see, but it's there, right? So, you know, in fact, let me just extend that out so you have to see it. Okay, that's from there. So, are you going to go long this bar knowing that you have one, two possible top events stacked, you know, one after another? In other words, if you are a six foot person, are you going to walk into a five foot room and shut the door? So, there, there is no room for your trade to run, assuming, you know, it's going to run. Well, that's not actually true. But anyway, you've got you've got these two zones here, right? So don't do it. Don't do it until you see price clear the zones. Then you'll know you have a chance at a runner. So here you can see what happened. Remember, I drew this line here separating the buyer delta from the seller delta. And what happened here? Oh, look there, right? You have all this buyer delta. Here's buyer delta. And again, the same split. You have all this seller delta down here. You have a Marskoi Kanyok, but this time it has a spine. Okay, and what happens? Price shoots down. Okay, and here you have almost the beginnings of an well, you do. You have an upside down Marskoi Kanyok. Okay. Price shoots up a little bit. You know, we're busting some stops here, probably. Um, it retraces upside down Marskoi Kanyok. But you're in this chop zone that I identified earlier. You know, and you, you could see that order flow was basically building a vise around price. So it wasn't going to go anywhere. So you have all these crazy events happening in here. And, um, Eventually, if this stops scrolling, okay. You know, eventually you get this weird looking uh, Marskoi, upside down Marskoi Kanyok bar, just like here you had one, right? You had one here, so you know something's trying to exhaust at the bottom, okay? And, you know, th this has no volume, probe fails, we come back down, 
try to come back up. There's volume down here again. It's the same as that volume. Look, the point of control of these is in the exact same spot right there. So you continue to have this, this attempt at exhaustion, and the further down you push, you know, the more volume. Now, now you're getting some more volume down here before you weren't. So we're trying to exhaust the sellers, and we finally exhaust the sellers here. It's hard to tell, though. I mean, I, I can't. I can't read this bar, okay? I'm not going to say this is a perfect Marskoi Kanyuk. This looks bizarre, upside down Marskoi Kanyuk. No, it doesn't meet my my brain's pattern recognition uh, requirements. So we push up anyway, and we push back up. We're going to, you know, again, retest, retest, and either bounce or fail breakthrough this zone up here, right? And you've got two zones up here now. And so look, look what's happening in these two zones. You've got buyers trying to push through zone one, and you've got, again, your excess of buyers in zone two with an abject, absolute failure. Abject, absolute failure. Why do I say that? Because they couldn't run as high as these guys did because they, part of them, were exhausted on this prior zone. So when you see this two zone exhaustion, what's going to happen? Utter and total chaos. Utter collapse that means we're going to be collapsing down and likely you know to be collapsing down fairly hard but you have this again you have this prior trade zone to worry about so if you're going to take your trade from this you're going to have to take it somewhere on the upper edge so that you have enough to make your two points plus have a runner right that's the idea you're going to have two points plus a runner and eventually your runner will hit and you'll make a lot of points. Meanwhile, your two point target will keep you in the game uh, when, whenever you actually get fully stopped out at a loss. Okay, so anyway, here we have the same thing. We have, you know, okay, perfect short from up here. We come to this prior trade zone identified here automatically already. I just extended it. And we have the absorption going on here. So here you just have to keep your eyeballs peeled. You, you saw that liquidity was on both sides of the gate there trying to do its thing. And then this ended up failing. You know, this is red, red bar again, right? With a nice split between um, seller delta and buyer delta. In fact, it's a taper down. Look at buyer delta tapering down this way. Let me see if I can illustrate that somehow. It's hard to do on, on this type of a chart. It won't let me snap correctly. But you can see how right there, buyer delta is tapering down this way. Seller delta is tapering down this way, but it, but it also tapers that way. So at the very bottom, seller delta is increasing. And what happens at the next bar? Seller delta increases more right there, right? So that's a continuation of that. We have, you know, failed attempts up here, zero volume, really. And we continue to go down. We continue to go down. You know, these are still red bars, red bars, nothing, nothing to, no need to look at anything yet until we get here. Here we have a green bar. Okay. So now that we have, we have a green bar, what am I seeing? Well, it's, it's, it's rather strange because what I'm seeing is, I'm seeing what would be a Marskoi Kanyok bar, except there's a mix of both a red and a green snout in there. So it's like, I can't make sense of you. There's very little volume in you. I am ignoring you. And this also fire, fired off a, I think, a, a, long, a delta bottom or, or some signal like that. And um, so I'm not making sense of you. I go over to liquidity. Liquidity isn't we're, we're not, it's not showing now, okay? But we go over liquidity, you know, and we see that uh, there, there's really nothing influencing price uh, from moving up. We're just clamped. Liquidity just has a clamp on us, right? So we continue sideways and that probe just goes back down. Failed, failed upward probe, we come back down and we actually got a... Uh, short sentiment signal or something. I forget what it said. But uh, along with that, we continued 
down. So now we have red, 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 no need to look at anything yet, red, no need to look at anything yet. Um, and then all of a sudden we go green again. Anyway, I, I'm going to stop here because this is just becoming very repetitive, you know, and looking at patterns. And here, because this is this is at the cash close, so we have we've got 50,000 contracts wandering into this darn thing, right? Here we have the ultimate upside down Marskoy Kanyok bar. And let me show you. Look, we have Delta sellers at the bottom here, and we have Delta buyers at the top, a very clear delineation of them. Bar body ends here. Here's the green bar. The body ended here. This is wick. So we have delta sellers at a probe that failed. And, you know, the next thing we, we get is push up. So where did that land us after all that, all that nonsense? So basically, sim paused. So the total, total number of points for this excursion, which included one complete abject failure of a trade was 78 points. Okay, so that was 78 points just for this small section that we did. And so that's what happened in the uh, trading room. People saw, you know, the levels being marked, called, stuff like that. In fact, there are people in my room now that just yell, uh, they can't pronounce it. So they yell, you know, Moscow Cognac, Moscow Cognac, you know, or Seahorse, Seahorse, upside down Seahorse. They'll yell that because they know it's time to start looking at, a directional trade that they also know to look at liquidity and to base their decision uh, on uh, resting liquidity. And we'll have to get into how to read resting liquidity some other time. There are many other nuances to it. And it's not just a matter of adding up, you know, contracts up and down the, uh, the limit order book. Anyway, that's it for now. Goodbye. Go away.